Thank you. Thank you. Very great to get a chance to meet all of you. I already had a couple good conversations to hear the unique challenges you all face. So I have kind of one of the coolest jobs in the world in that I get to work with a team that is engaged with developers all around the world. So people in pretty much any, any area of the world, big countries, big, uh, small countries, uh, rural, urban, people who are trying to figure out how to use technology to solve problems they see. And what we see is as our programs now reach over a million developers in person every year. We have uh, actual groups and face-to-face and -face contact with folks in 140 countries around the world. And it's truly inspiring to see the work that these teams do. And importantly, the feedback that by working with them we're able to get. One of the things that we as a team, as, as you were just hearing, really value is the connection that we get uh, both as being able to enable people, but also to understand what we're doing right and wrong. Uh, as, you know, as Google, we're here, you know, we have people, I think our, our team has people in 32 countries, uh, but many of the products are built far away from where the people are using them. So it's really useful for us to actually hear, I was talking to somebody a few minutes ago who's, who's at a ag school, and a lot of the folks there are coming, at, coming to, the, uh, to their day-by-day -day challenges with a different set of problems than a Google engineer sitting in this building in Sunnyvale. And so how do we bring that back? How do we bring those, those experiences and concerns and say, hey, this works really great for people who are solving this kind of problem, but it really doesn't work for me here. So that is an important role that we feel we have as a team, and you can always help us with that by bringing that feedback to us. So today, I really want to, uh, as well, welcome all of you. And thank you for making the time to come out here. Uh, I definitely recognize that long ago, uh, if you can believe it, long ago I was actually a student. And I actually organized student groups in a regional uh, across multiple states and saw how difficult it is, the tasks that you all are taking on. How do you get people to come to meetings? How do you work at the university? How do you think about success, secession and, and how you'll actually keep the group going after you leave? And these are all really hard challenges. And you're trying to do it at the same time as you're actually trying to go to school and, uh, and learn your own skills. So I want to thank you. And, and hopefully, you'll see that what we're trying to do with this program is help you learn the skills that will be useful for you to take the, many of the theoretical things you've been learning and actually put them into practical work. So, oh, I gotta pause. Totally so, describe myself some of you may have seen this. This gives a sense of some friends, of the things you can do with what movies, you learn. Getting my nails done. And lately I've been into machine learning using convolutional neural networks. <laughs> I don't know why you're laughing at me. Since childhood, she's always wanted to know everything. Why is that? How is that? What does it do? She just wants to be always learning, moving, doing different stuff. I haven't always been into computer science, but my mom grows rose bushes in my front yard. Every season, they'd get diseased, and then my mom and I would have to diagnose it. Knowing Sheza, she wanted to do something about it. I had the idea as a potential thing I could do for my research class with Miss Sun. Why anyone would sit around their summer vacation teaching a machine to identify plants, not sure, but that was what she wanted to do. I wanted to have a way people could diagnose plant diseases just by taking a photo of it. And so that's when I started looking into TensorFlow. I'd watch different tutorials and read blog posts every night. Shaza took it upon herself to do all the background research necessary and then start to ask. What can this really do? PlantMD works when the user takes a picture of the plant and it tells you what plant it is and whether it's healthy or diseased. And if it is diseased, what disease it is. My first question was, is it an app that's only on your phone? And she's like, no. Somebody has downloaded this app and using it? That was like, wow. Something that I just was so proud. I don't think you have to be a super genius to get into coding. Really, anyone can do it with an idea and with perseverance. I feel like open source technology and the wealth of information on the internet is empowering my generation. I know that I can do anything I put my mind to, and so can anybody else. So I imagine all of you have, have seen or know of examples or have had that yourself where 
things you, the idea that you have, you have some problem you're excited about or interested in, and you can start applying the things you've learned to it. Uh, the team asked if maybe uh, I could share some of my own personal journey and how, and that maybe that might be a helpful thing just to understand a, how a path can happen through uh, the world of technology. And I would certainly say my path has been a, a widely weaving one. So they have not even seen these slides. So uh, I'm sorry if they're, uh, well, you, you'd be the judge. <laughs> Long ago, I was, like many kids, interested in lots of different stuff. This was when I was 11. And I could have gone any different direction at that point. I had lots of things I thought were interesting. But I was pretty lucky that uh, my father actually thought, for some reason, that I might be interested in computers. And so as an 11-year-old, he signed me up for a community college coding program, uh, and, which I stood out in. <laughs> um, but it really. When I, got, when I actually sat down and started coding, it, it showed, <clears throat> it created this whole new world of, wow, you can put whatever you want and control this thing to make it do all sorts of things. And so within a year, I had a bulletin board with, that, with hundreds of users, uh, and I was, I was coding on my own and enjoying it. But there weren't any kind of communities, really, at that point, except for uh, bulletin boards. And so there wasn't a lot of easy way for me to continue learning. And so I, I, my, I would say progression sort of didn't go very far after that for a while, until when I was in college. You know, the internet had been around for a, for a while since the 70s, but something happened in the early 90s that transformed it. And I'm sure you all know I'm talking about the worldwide gopher network. <laughs> so when the web came out, actually, uh, just around the same time, maybe even a little bit earlier, something called gopher came out, which was to me, transformational. It was the first time you had the idea that you could look at a menu of items and you have no idea where they are. They could be anywhere in the world. You could say one line is to connect you to a computer system in Copenhagen, another searches a ways a text index of a system in Virginia. And so we, my friends and I put together an environmental thing we called EcoGopher, where we indexed mailing lists of environmental information, found all the, to all the fact sheets on toxic chemicals in the world. Uh, from the EPA and such, and made that all available. And that was like 92. And for me, that was the, the world changed, and all of a sudden there were opportunities that hadn't been there before. And I say this because guess what? This continues to happen. And I would argue it happens faster and faster. So for me, it was not about knowing how to program on an Apple II Plus that was the valuable skill, it was knowing how to recognize when interesting things were happening and there was opportunities to change. So I actually left, hopped out of school and started a company. So I, and my company was focused on, I was pretty stylish back then, as you can tell. <laughs> uh, and my company was focused on the idea of open data. I had already seen that there was all these amazing things. If you just make information available, then you can start cutting and slicing and putting it together in ways that haven't been thought of before. And so we started working. We did programs, projects with the government. We did things with big companies. And we were always trying to figure out what was our product going to be, what we were going to be able to make that was interesting. And this was 96, 97. That was reasonably early. And uh, so I was, at that point, kind of viewed as, if people were to talk to me, and say, oh, this is a, a data guy. He knows all about how to cut and slice data. But we ended up, what we put together ended up being really valuable and uh, interesting to company called AltaVista, which probably most of you have ne never, never used. But if, if you can imagine, there was a time when Google was not the top search company. It was AltaVista was sort of the first big search engine that came out. And so uh, my friends and I who had built this company, we all moved out to California. And at that point, I was really, as I got into that company, people said, oh, this person, Jason, he's, he's the search guy. I ran the core search, search indexing team for AltaVista. Later on, I went to Yahoo. They wanted to add uh, search to Yahoo Mail, so I built search for Yahoo Mail. And so I was, I was the search guy. But, I, but I, wasn't. I was the person who was interested in interesting problems. And pretty soon, I ended up uh, overseeing sort of a messenger and mail and a bunch of things that were happening there. And when I got bored with that, my family and I moved to London. And I started working on a little app called Shazam, which hopefully some of you have heard of. And, and that was interesting because it was where 
technology, suitably advanced technology, felt like magic to users. Like it was not, it was not, the goal was not to make something complex with you know, powerful algorithms and all of this. It was that, but the goal was to make something that in a simple, easy way solved user problems. And that's what drew me to it. And so I spent a, a fair amount of time really looking at how do you make that fast? How do you make that easy? Uh, you know, it was a whole new thing. And then I was actually, I, I routinely ended up going to big music industry events and the Grammys and all of this. And folks would say, oh, he's, you know, Jason, he's a music industry guy. And so it's interesting how as, as you follow your interests, if you, if you follow your interests, you can actually be whoever, you know, you can be, be true to yourself, but you get to, it's, you shouldn't let yourself be uh, sort of uh, shoehorned into a particular role. So for example, then I came to Google and I was working on social products. And at some forum, people were saying, you know, hey, here's all the things we're doing for developers. And it's, it's really amazing. And I was like, hey, new guy here. Um, actually, it's not all amazing. I can think of but this doesn't work, that doesn't work. What are we going to do about that? And a, a little bit of career advice. Sometimes that kind of thing can get you in trouble. <laughs> so uh, a couple weeks later, Sundar, who's now our CEO, came by and said, you seem to have some ideas on what we should be doing about, around developers why don't you start a group focused on making Google great for developers? And so that's really what I've been doing since then for about the last four and a half years. And what, as, I, as I mentioned, in the end, that ends up being about one of the coolest jobs I know of and certainly one of my favorite things I've ever been able to do because it gives me a chance to work with folks like yourselves all around the world. So I hope that gives you a, an idea of a path. Uh, and, and I want to reiterate that the thing that is, I, I think, uh, people, the trap that people fall into is thinking that because they're good at one thing, that they should just keep doing that thing. And I would just always encourage you to keep learning. And as you work, you're in such a great spot to be meeting lots of different people of skill sets. See what, what other people they think is interesting. Because often, that's where you're going to find the signal of what the next big thing is or the next big opportunity for you. So now that I'm here and I get to work with uh, our Google developers team, uh, all around the world, I want to help you understand a little bit of how what you're doing as DSC leads connects into a broader community. So beyond DSC, we also have a number of community programs. So you know, we have Women Tech Makers, where we have over 100,000 women around the world who we support with programs and speakers and resources. We have our Google Developer Experts program, where we actually uh, help folks in the community and find that folks who are experts in particular areas. And then they share their knowledge with, other, with others around the world. And I, I can say, in each of these areas, I have met amazing folks. I certainly like, I can remember meeting GDEs and Jakarta and, and La, uh, Lagos and all around who have blown me away, both with their knowledge and their passion. Um, and then we have our GDG groups, which are actually all around the world and are probably the most similar directly with what you're doing in DSC. And so we want to really encourage you to be thinking both at, you know, what you're working on now and how you're engaged with working with your students at your university, but also consider that going forward, there's always opportunities to, to connect with these broader communities. And I think it should be a great opportunity to, to look at are there other ways to have folks who are at a university that has many people who go off to the town they're in or a big city nearby, that it's probably worthwhile to reach out to the, the GDGs in those areas and the GDEs as well and see if maybe you can share speakers, interact, because uh, I think that will probably be interesting for, for you, interesting for them, and probably create a lot of opportunities for both increased learning as well as, in reality, a lot of great opportunities to network that can help in your career and the career of the folks in your group. So with that, I want to thank you. Uh, this is, I hope, will be very useful. And as was said, this is both a chance for you to learn some things about how to do what you're doing better but also to give real honest feedback on what we can do better going forward. This is an early program, uh, and I think it has immense f future based on all the great work you're doing. Thank you.